So how would I describe cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma and how do I work that up? Squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common skin cancer that, is, uh, that patients have in the United States. Uh, the first most common is basal cell carcinoma, and then the next one you might hear about is melanoma. So squamous cell carcinoma occurs about 400,000 times a year, but actually has a higher uh, death rate than melanoma. So more people can die from squamous cell carcinoma because it's much more common. So uh, squamous cell carcinoma is a cancer of the keratinocyte, which is part of the skin. So those skin cells uh, become abnormal over time. They progress due to damage from ultraviolet light and other fat environmental factors and they become abnormal and they form tumors which typically appear as red, either raised lumps that are very thick and scaly or they may, may be a flat patch in some case. So when do patients come in to see us, uh, to see a dermatologist or another physician when they have squamous cell carcinoma? Sometimes they come in without any referral, they just uh, come in on their own and they may have a lesion on their body or their skin that they will come in to have evaluated at that point if we see that and it looks suspicious for a squamous cell, then we will take a, a biopsy sample of that. Uh, other times they may be referred for, uh, from a physician to be evaluated for a tumor. Uh, and another way is they may just be coming in for a complete skin exam, which is recommended for all persons at least one time a year. If they don't have a history of skin cancer, then they may just come into the dermatologist to be looked at. And it, sometimes we find a squamous cell carcinoma, the patient was not aware it was present. And then we <clears throat> will find that uh, by examining the patient and then proceed to go over the next steps for them. So the diagnostic workup for cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma usually begins with a biopsy. So a skin biopsy is a sample of the skin that's taken of the site, send it off to the laboratory to determine the diagnosis. So once squamous cell carcinoma is, uh, is diagnosed by biopsy, you, you, the first thing that a physician might do is look at what type of squamous cell carcinoma that is. Now, squamous cell carcinomas can come in different forms. They can also come uh, not only different forms on the surface, but they can also come in different forms under the microscope. So the number one thing that is looked at primarily is, is the squamous cell carcinoma well differentiated or is it poorly differentiated? Which means does it look more like normal skin or do the cells look more like abnormal cells that you really can't tell uh, by looking at them under the microscope if they're squamous cells? So the more a uh, tumor is poorly differentiated, the higher risk it is. Uh, the next thing that would be done is to examine some other risk factors uh, on the biopsy. So certain risk factors come to mind, which is, uh, does the squamous cell carcinoma invade the nerves? And if it does, what size? And are those nerves named or are they smaller nerves? Do they have names? Um, the other thing that's looked at uh, most commonly is how deep is the tumor? So the tumor can be measured. If the biopsy is adequate enough, the tumor can be measured uh, for depth. And it can also be measured for how uh, deep in the tissue the tumor actually goes. So those are things that we look at in a general sense to look at the risk factors. And the other thing that is considered when you're working up squamous cell carcinoma is location. Certain locations on the body are higher risk, which means, uh, for example, the lip or the ear or the temple, or sometimes the scalp can be higher risk locations. And those things all go into sort of a, a, a staging system. So you know how we as physicians examine uh, squamous cell carcinoma is by what stage they are, and there's different staging systems. So that's sort of be, uh, the beginning of how we work up the tumor. So staging the squamous cell carcinoma, what does that mean to a patient? So staging is a way of determining how severe the tumor is or how serious the tumor is. And the reason why we stage uh, skin cancer is to, is to determine the risk for progression. So what we want to know is if that tumor is taken out, or if even if it's not taken out, what's the risk that the tumor will progress? What's the risk the tumor will recur if it is taken out? Uh, what's the chance it may have spread to other parts of the body, either locally or in another area. So staging is typically done with two different systems. There are, is one called the AJCC criteria, uh, the J American Joint Commission on Cancer, which is one system that really looks at uh, the depth of invasion, primarily of the tumor. The other one is the BWH, which is the Brigham and Women's Hospital System. That's the main system. That one also looks at depth of invasion, but what that one does is looks more at risk factors. So there's different risk factors that are that go into the prognosis of a squamous cell carcinoma, such as invasion of a nerve, depth of invasion, and also the size of the tumor. So those are all things that go into the staging for the BWH system. And so each one can lend different information to a physician on what they can expect that tumor to do. So when do patients present with squamous cell carcinoma and then at what stages do we see them? So as dermatologists, we typically see most squamous cell carcinomas at an early stage, which means they're very curable by surgery. Uh, sometimes patients may present uh, for whatever reason 
uh, for with the squamous cell carcinoma that's more advanced. And there's a certain number of uh, certain conditions that of the patients that may produce a more advanced tumor. Number one is advanced age. Uh, another reason that a tumor may be coming in advance is if the patient's immunocompromised. Uh, immunocompromised may occur from different reasons. It may be because they've had an organ transplant. It's probably one of the more common immunocompromised states they may have. They also may have been treated with an immunocompromising medication, such as prednisone, methotrexate, something like that, for a chronic uh, condition, autoimmune disease, something like that. So um, the other thing is just simple neglect. Um, sometimes patients just don't come in and get things taken care of that they have, so they may have neglected a tumor, and then we may see it come in at a more advanced stage where it's a little bit harder to treat. Women's cell carcinoma is one of those um, conditions that is, I would say, fairly well understood by most of the medical community. Uh, as far as patients go, education uh, avenues would be the American Academy of Dermatology, the Skin Cancer Foundation, other organizations such as that are putting out uh, awareness information to consumers. Uh, there are also uh, medications that are now approved to treat squamous cell carcinoma, especially advanced cases. And so there'll be, there'll be some more information about that that will be presented probably toward consumers. But as far as education goes, there's a lot of general information out there. It's just whether a patient is able to access that. Yeah, even going on to the Centers for Disease Control, CDC website, there'll be information about that as well. So, and then the other places that consumers may get information or patients you know, may get information is websites that are well-respected such as uh, WebMD or uh, yeah, eMedicine or other you know, similar uh, consumer websites that are well-respected that are designed to uh, get information. So I think that the awareness is arising because of efforts of the specialty societies such as the American Academy of Dermatology uh, to raise awareness to people to get skin checks or at least to recognize what a squamous cell might look like.